All right, try this one more time. Apologies for the audio difficulties out there, and welcome to everybody. Hopefully, the microphone's working fine for right now, so good news if you can hear me on this. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Welcome to our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. It is bright, bright and early on Monday morning. We do not have anything, again, in the way of major amounts of problems out there. Fog is starting to lift slowly across much of the area, but we will see, again, some problems with visibility out there throughout the rest of the day today. So if you have any problems with fog for early this morning, that should be taken care of. Visibility later on could be a problem as we get into and around the area of later this afternoon with more chances of showers and thunderstorms, limited chances only. But again, if you are driving, some of those showers and thunderstorms could interfere with visibility. So please keep that in mind if you're going to be heading out the door relatively soon and not going to be back until later on tonight. Severe weather doesn't look to be an opportunity for now, but we will keep our eyes on that and bring you more updates as we get into and around the area for uh, later on tonight, so stick around for more on that for right now. Currently in the Mid-South area, we've got temperatures back into the mid-upper 70s. We'll take a look at those coming up on WeatherNet 3 in just a little while. Drop your comments and any weather reports you have into the comments section. We'd love to know where you're from, what the weather's looking like out there. We'll show you where to send your weather pictures to coming up in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Currently, again, upper 70s and heading for mid to upper 80s later on today. Granted, that doesn't exactly sound like a huge amount of heat out there, but if you're working or exercising outdoors, that's something that you're going to have to take into account. And don't forget to, again, drink that water back that your body sweats away. Keep an extra thermos of ice water on hand just to be on the safe side. Mid to upper 80s again by lunchtime, lower 90s later on. There is a very slim chance of a shower or thunderstorm popping up later on. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little while. Good morning to everybody out there checking in for this morning. Uh, Jeremiah Lewis, Cordova has some light fog out there. Thank you very much for that one. Tunisia Collins, uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi. Beautiful sunny morning. Glad to see somebody's getting some sunshine out there. A little bit of sun striking the water towers north of Germantown High School. Mostly fog out there. You should be able to see the towers of Poplar and Mendenhall out there on the horizon, but unfortunately a little bit limited visibility this morning. Mid to upper 70s, sunny skies above that fog layer, so we are getting at least some sunshine out there. Totally socked in by fog earlier, starting to again get a little bit better visibility right now into and around Shelby Farms Park. Traffic on Farm Road heading toward Walnut Grove moving along pretty nicely. Olive Branch, Mississippi, former mayor of Olive Branch, current meteorologist Sam Reichard, his weather underground webcam from the backyard looking back to the northwest. Clouds and some fog out there for right now. From the Olive Branch Airport, 72 degrees. 5 mile per hour winds out of the northwest and maxed out humidity of 100% for this morning. A little bit of sunshine, a little bit more sunshine making its way through the trees of the grove on the Ole Miss campus in Oxford, Mississippi this morning. From the Rhodes College campus on in the around the area of central Memphis, so far looking good with clearing skies and looking good back to the northwest with mostly uh, clear skies into and around the area for right now. And traffic heavy coming into the peak of rush hour, but good visibility. This was zero visibility earlier this morning. Now things are much improved into and around that area from what it looks like for right now. Kevin Potts, good morning from Sardis Lake. Glad to hear it's a good morning into and around the area there. Mike Mosley, hope I'm saying that right, from around... Trenton, Tennessee. Welcome to the show. Sunny and beautiful uh, reported there. Good morning to everybody else checking in. And if you've got weather reports, drop them into the comments section. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast, pick it up at WREG.com. Also available is our 7 to 10 day forecast is available there. Or check the blue bar at the bottom of your screen and you can see a little bit more about what's going on with your forecast scrolling on by here. Got fog out there, but it's starting to burn off slowly. In the meantime, if you're tuning in, Pre-9 o'clock hour, the dense fog advisory continues, but most of this should be going away at least in about the next 50 minutes or so as the sun continues to stir the atmosphere up. Not seeing anything in the way of rainfall, at least for right now, as we see that possibility of what's going on into the Mid-South with less rainfall for right now. Anywhere across the area, not picking up rain, but a slim chance of some showers coming up later on today. Closest rainfall down toward the Delta, 
up into the Appalachians off the East Coast, but nothing tropical heading our way. We'll take a special look at that coming up here in just a little while. Mid to upper 70s, again, across much of the area on live real-time WeatherNet 3. So far, again, looking at the possibility of some very warm conditions over the next several days for the entire Mid-South. Not much of any hope of any cooler weather. Good news, we're not seeing any heat waves building up either, so that's something. And those winds, very light, not going to do much to really help cool us off. Now, through the rest of the day, winds will be out of the northeast, temperatures back in the mid to upper 80s. And as we get into later on this afternoon, that's where we start to see the possibility of some more showers making their way up and into the area. Northwest Mississippi, northern parts of Mississippi will be the best possibility of that. If you're along and north of I-40, Maybe a few speckles, but right now it doesn't really look like too much of anything uh, in the way of major amounts of problems out there for the time being. So hot and humid is going to be the main thing to watch out for throughout the rest of the day for today, no matter where you are in the Mid-South. But if you're south of the metro area, Tunica, Senatobia, back toward Holly Springs, Oxford, Clarksdale, Batesville, even over toward Tupelo. We could be, again, seeing some stray chances of showers and thunderstorms once again across the area. Diminishing as the sun goes down, less and less chances through News Channel 3 at 10. Pretty much gone by midnight. Could be a scattered shower down south of Oxford and Batesville. Tomorrow morning, low temperatures only back in the lower to mid-70s across the entire Mid-South. Rural Tennessee, and northern parts of rural areas of northern Mississippi might see temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, but that's going to be about as cool as it gets for much of the area. Seven-day forecast, again, showing temperatures back into the mid to upper 80s. As we get into the rest of the forecast, this is going to look frighteningly similar out there as we see little, if any, change taking place across much of the Mid-South area. Numbers, again, for the rest of the week, mid to upper 80s to lower 90s. Now, again, for today... Not much of any chance. We're going to keep a slim, non-zero chance of rainfall in the forecast for today. Increasing for tomorrow afternoon, about a 20% chance for Tuesday. By Wednesday, we head up to about 30% coverage chance. And then as we go into the rest of the week, better chances of showers and thunderstorms start making their way into the forecast as we head toward week's end <clears throat> Excuse me, and into the early part of this next weekend. Now, if you're looking for... The best time to get outdoors, anything into and around the area with less chances of rainfall. Best opportunity is going to be coming up next Sunday. And once again, it's a non-zero chance. So there may be an isolated shower or thunderstorm out there. And please remember, again, if you've got outdoor activities, you should be able to keep them. But if you see lightning, if you can detect by either seeing it or hearing thunder, that means you are too close and you can be struck by lightning don't take any chances. Practice good lightning safety. Get back indoors again. Remember the catchphrase from the National Weather Service. It might sound silly, but if it saves your life, that's an important thing. So remember when thunder roars, go indoors. Very simple, very easy way to make certain you and whoever you're working with or exercising with or playing with outside stays safe. It's something to think about out there. Through the rest of the forecast, again, into the second week of August, we see that potential for more chances of showers and thunderstorms coming back. Not great chances once again, and numbers not really changing anytime soon. So it's very hot, very humid across the entire Mid-South area and not seeing anything in the way of major amounts of cooler weather heading on through anytime soon. So this is about as typically early August as you can get for this area of the country. So again, something to think about there. Back into the tropics, we had Eric pass by the Hawaiian Islands back toward the southwest. Flossie, it looks like, is going to make a bit of an impact on the weather with a possible direct strike, but it's only a tropical depression at this time, so it doesn't look like a major threat. And then we have Gill back out to the west of that, also a tropical depression. This one doesn't look like it's going to be much of a threat either. If you're heading to Hawaii in the next couple of days, that could again be something to take a look at from there. For the rest of the Atlantic, taking a look into the Gulf, the Caribbean, the Western Atlantic, we're not seeing anything developing out here for now, and there's a good reason for that. So, so far across the Atlantic into around between Africa and South America, 
nothing according to the National Hurricane Center expected for the next two to five days. Very good reason for that. The Sahara sends tons of dust out through the air, and this is a very large plume coming in from off of West Africa. That dry, dusty air can sap the strength of any storm systems coming in from off Western Africa. So that's why we're not seeing all that much right now. And this larger plume is heading its way out into the Central Atlantic, so it's a good possibility we may not see that much going on for the course of the next week or so if everything holds. So thanks to the Sahara Desert, it's affecting our weather about a hemisphere away. So we're not going to be seeing too much of anything else out there. Coming up this week in space, and you can check my social media pages for more on this, amateur investigations of anything out there that may not be, again, scientifically recognized, UFOs, Bigfoots, ghosts, anything like that. But investigations and analysis without using scientific method a lot of people do it. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, great place to go to for more information on that. You may remember the all-female spacewalk that was supposed to happen a few months ago from the International Space Station. Didn't happen because there wasn't the right size spacesuits for one of the smaller female astronauts. So the New York Times takes a look at the fact that we have to think a little bit more uh, fairly across the area when it comes to equipment and who's going up there instead of just having a one-size-fits-all approach. Very interesting article on that. And if you'd like to sign up to get your name on the Mars 2020 rover, which is leaving in about 350 days, over 8 million people have signed up. I'm one of them. And if you'd like to know more about that, Jet Propulsion Laboratory has a website for you. You can find all these things by going to my website on social media for more details there. Maybe this will cool you off a little bit. Weather on the fourth rock from the sun. High temperature on Wednesday, July 31st at the Curiosity rover site at Gale Crater on Mars. Minus 20. That was the high temperature. Low temperature of a minus 112 degrees in the air. It's warmer on the ground by just a little bit, but not by much. If you'd like to know more about the weather out there, take a look at mars.nasa.gov. Thanks to Code Crew and Mr. Meka Ikwekwe for inviting me for being a judge last week Sunday at their hackathon, their biggest event of the year, 2019, listening to the kids explain their apps that they were developing for school and education health. It was a really great time. If you'd like to know more, their website available here about what they're doing in the Mid-South to teach kids coding and also to get adults their degrees in coding as well. You can also follow the hashtag GritGrindCode definitely sums up their attitude and a great place to be to learn a lot more. I got very uh, good responses on here from the kids, very creative, really good place to go to for more information on coding, so definitely want to follow along with them. More information, stuff going on in the Mid-South, please let me know. Again, a good opportunity is to follow me on social media, or you can again send stuff to my email address at austin.onic at wreg.com. Thanks to everybody for checking in from this morning, including from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, Diana Lynn Smith Wilkerson. Welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for checking in from there. Cherokee Village, Arkansas, Virginia, Sandland Wiles. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you very much for that. And Janet London from Humboldt, Tennessee. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much for that one. Tune in for more on Live at 9, and I'll have your forecast on News Channel 3 at noon for more details on what's going on up there, an updated forecast on that. And again, we're all over social media. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more updates on what's going on out there. That'll wrap it up for this edition of Weather Overtime. Again, we're going to be expecting more heat and humidity. If you missed the forecast and you're tuning in later on today, just rewind to the front and take a look at the forecast all the way on through. Or stay tuned. Tim Simpson will have more coming up today on News Channel 3, first at 4. That's a wrap from downtown Memphis. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thank you to everybody for checking in for this morning. And stick around with a lot more from News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of Monday and the rest of the week. Have a safe week out there.